Hello and welcome to another episode of Industry Spotlight. In this series I have a detailed look into a certain company or individual from the anime industry. I look at their history, achievements and impact on the industry. In this episode I'll be looking at a less likely studio. Normally I pick one of the industry's giants, but in this episode I'll be talking about Kyoto Animation. They might not be as historically big as some of the other studios I've covered, but their influence does not lack. Kyo Anime's development as a studio is one of the most unique and interesting out there. So where did this humble studio all begin? Surprisingly, it's a lot further back than their portfolio may suggest. In 1981, Yoko Hata and her husband Hideyuki Hata moved to Kyoto. Having already worked in the industry, they founded a small studio named Kyoto Anime Studio. Here they would do commissioned work for cell paintings on various shows and movies. They continued this until 1985 where they became a company, and opened their horizons up to new work. They would be contracted to do various jobs on popular anime at the time, and they really worked on some big projects. Cowboy Bebop, Gundam, even Ghibli hired them for a few of their films. Throughout the 80s and 90s, they were just a small studio. It was in 2002 that they would be hired to produce their first TV series, a spin-off series for the Full Metal Panic series, Full Metal Panic Fomofu. They were taking a big chance giving a project like this to a company with no prior experience. Thankfully, the series went down well, and they would go on to create more Full Metal Panic some years later. Around this time they would create an OVA named Manto to advertise their abilities as a studio. This is technically their first work as it was released before Full Metal Panic, a series that would start a string of successful projects and collaborations in the future, and would be another big step for the studio was Air in 2005. This was an adaptation of the key visual novel. Air came out at a point in the industry where a lot of things were changing. It was a part of the ever-growing Moe trend and one of the increasing amount of visual novel adaptations. After Air, Kyo Ani had solidified their place in the industry and were favourites for publishers such as Kodakawa. The next year was 2006, and what a year it would turn out to be for Kyo Ani. They would adapt another key visual novel, Canon, but another show stole the spotlight, an adaptation of a light novel named Haruhi Suzumiya. Due to the light novel's already existing large fan base, there was a lot of pressure on the studio to make something good. Following an already strong year in the industry, the series was a big success. Not only was it hit in Japan, but it sold hundreds of thousands of copies. Kyoto Animation continued to repeat this formula in 2007 where they adapted yet another key visual novel, Clanad, and made another Moe comedy show, Lucky Star. Both sold really well for the studio. Haruhi Suzumiya made her return in 2009, with a rerun of the original series, a new series of episodes, and the infamous Endless Eight. Endless Eight was a series that would air alongside the new series of Haruhi. It was pretty much the same thing every episode with redone animation and redone voiceovers. Despite it being quite controversial at the time, the Blu-rays sold really well. Also released in 2009 was K-On! An important show for the studio for many reasons. It became their most successful series with the Blu-rays averaging around 40,000. It was also quite rare to see a female director make such a successful show as well as it being quite controversial for taking the Moe genre in a different direction. There was no romance, no action, no superpowers, it was purely Moe characters. Even today, shows are trying to replicate this simplistic series by making shows that aren't really about anything. It's a tricky thing to pull off, most shows only achieve a fraction of Kaon's success. During 2009, Kyoto Animation changed how they interact with their anime. They took up the job of being the publisher as well as the animation studio, allowing them to gain even more profit. And as if all this success wasn't enough, they went on to release the movie, The Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. The movie was hugely anticipated by fans all around the world, and it went on to gross over 100 million yen. In 2011, they would release a show that didn't pander as much to the mainstream, Nichijo. Unfortunately, the Blu-rays only averaged about 3,000, which is very poor for a Kiyoani show, but it's still highly regarded by fans for its style of humour. The next few shows would follow a similar trend. In 2012, they would release Hyoka and Chinibyo. They both sold pretty well but were far from the Kaons and the Haruhis. The next year Tamako Market would be another disappointment as it only averaged 3,000 for the Blu-rays. But don't think the studio's success was over just yet. In 2013 they released the new anime series, Free. The series gained a massive amount of popularity before it was even released. A 30 second advert was aired in 2013 and it went viral online. Full series was released later that year and became quite a success. The following year would host two more Kiyoani TV shows, first Kukai no Kanata that sold fairly poorly and then Amagi Brilliant Park that sold just a little bit better. So what's next for the studio? Well their next TV show was planned to be Euphonium, and that's probably out by the time you're watching this video. It seems to be structured similarly to Kaon, so who knows? It could be the studio's next big hit. Regardless of what you think about Kyoto Animation shows critically, you can't fault their success. They're a studio that know how to create successful anime. They also know how to conduct themselves as a business. 
To go from doing commissional cell paintings to fully producing and publishing some of the most successful anime is a fantastic accomplishment. So that's been this episode of Industry Spotlight, but there are plenty of others you can check out now. Remember to click the like button and share the video around if you enjoyed the video, and you can also subscribe for more videos. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.